Hurtado from Shell uh, met with me and she challenged how it feels to be an individual sitting at the helm of this industry and being the only woman, uh, maybe two of us at times it's a peer, but when you look at our industry, it's myself. And does it feel good? Is this power of being an exception good? And most of the time it is, isn't it? We feel like I'm an exception. You get painted all over the papers, it sounds great. But that's not our life is all about. And I can tell you it's not good, it's lonely. It does get damn lonely. And uh, there are times when I want to cry, I don't know who to cry to. And uh, because if I do cry in front of uh, those guys, the male, my colleagues, which I love the most, in mm -hmm. here, um, and uh, they feel like she's weak. Um, or I'll be, I'll be labeled, I'll be named. But that's the empathy that at times when you have your own sisterhood um, that you can talk to. And also the cultural challenges that we come from in terms of our families. The other day I was talking to um, a, a, a colleague of mine we're talking about family backgrounds. I'm the eldest at home. My younger brother, who's 15 years younger than me, when they were paying lobola for my sister, she basically, I was basically said that uh, she needs to sit in the negotiations because, because, because. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as such, um, today I'm not going to speak much, but it's really to just formally thank ULP for this opportunity, Theo and the team, and to set the context for the day. And I thought it was important in doing that to just go back to Francesca Jenner, who is a professor at Harvard, in one of her books, uh, which says Rebel's Talent, those of you is a rebel talent, and it says, the title is, Why it pays to, pray, to break the rules at work and in life. And I felt at part of the preamble of that book that says, do not let tradition bind you. See it as an opportunity to set you free. And that's the reality of where we operate within. Because if we don't find that source of energy, creativity, and innovation in these constraints that we operate within, we will forever look up to a lot of our male colleagues, and I'm not breaking up to give them a break, mm -hmm. to pave the path for us. And some of us are very fortunate. I've been one of those fortunate female talent that I was identified at a very early age at Ernst & Young. And throughout my career, I had male who were committed to the DNI agenda, who gave me an opportunity to grow, push the boundaries. So I didn't become into becoming excellence and be focusing on excellence by choice. I was forced to because I had to do twice as hard to be able to succeed, not to disappoint all of the individuals that took interest in my career. But it's only few of us. So how do we then open up that opportunity? So when Tato and I were having these dialogues, when discussing, we thought the theme, funnel to tunnel, is probably appropriate for us going forward. Because it is true that when you look at the work environment, um, I might have pressed several times, we have exceptional talent coming through universities, um, energized, hopeful. They get into a work environment, some of them with ideas to become successful entrepreneurs over time. And unfortunately, at some stage, they enter into a panel, into a funnel. There are various reasons why we, we go through that. And if I ask the room, I'll probably get 120 of those reasons. But I summarize them in two, it's the systems as well as the culture. And some of the systems, they are codes which government is trying their best to do in terms of diversity and inclusion. The transformation agenda, we are clear in terms of the BE codes, triple BE codes where we are going. But unless there is a will, rather than to tick a box, and unless it feels comfortable to stand here and say, I'm a level two or I'm a level one, without really testing myself against the meaningful contribution I've made, the intention of those systems and the frameworks, we will not breach the barriers. And what I feel in our industry and overall in business in South Africa is that as leaders, we still feel good to talk about the artificial outputs rather than the quality of the inputs. 
and whether we are making a meaningful and sustainable contribution. And that, I think, is our challenge for today in terms of how we're going to equip ourselves to do that. Equally so, give an example in my business, we have processes and system. One of them is called rules of the road, where if you go into a point, anyone in the organization, particularly at a senior level, you have to have a panel that is representatives of females. You have to have the candidates that represent the female pool. It's, at times, it's quite shocking what I see. And I said, if there's an exception to that rule, as the CEO, I'll sign it off. But people walk around the system, they walk around the system because innovation is important. And they do that. <laughs> so I get five females, two males, all of the females have scored below six or seven. I've got teams in HR, they've probably seen it all. And the men have scored 29 out of 30, 25 out of 30. The females are about four and six. And they don't have to go through an exception to have a conversation with me. And I realize that unless we can change our minds to make sure that they actually want to, not that they have to, then we will not break this. And that's the reality of what we're faced with today. So I requested this video because at times you look at some of us, you feel we are just so above the, the level. I can't reach that. But this is the talent that I'm privileged to have, to work with, both in the industry, also in our business, that can show it's possible. But again, I think it is not going to be easy because the biases, the stereotypes that are all showing there are still prevalent today. And as women, for who we are, we don't want to talk about it. I recently looked at issues of sexual harassment. We feel embarrassed to talk about those things. I have personally experienced that at my level, not in BP, externally, but I was already a senior person. I went into a meeting, and my colleague, not a colleague, was actually providing a service, said, your legs look fantastic. Do you exercise? <laughs> and you ask yourself a question. I'm wearing my skirt, I like it, and I want to show off my... Sh but is it your purpose to really tell me that in a professional world? And the next thing you give me a business card and say, can we have coffee? These are things that are real. For younger entrepreneurs who go into a meeting and sit with stereotype colleagues that think like that, when they walk out of that session with a business proposal, what do they do? I have the privilege at that stage to have been senior enough to say, I will find another service provider because I was in a decision-making process. But not everyone else is. Majority of us are not in that position. So how do we break these chains? How do we challenge these things and talk about them openly? Issues of wellness. We carry a lot and lot of responsibilities as mothers. Yet, we get to the work environment, we need to be competitive. When a weekend comes, my in-laws, related to my late husband, expect me to come and cook in Soweto and be part of the society and spend the whole night there, which I do on Saturdays or Fridays. Monday, I need to be effective. I need to be in the boardroom. I need to have read that 345 page that my team usually do as a board pack. <laughs> because if you don't, on page 29 or on page 144, they're going to tell you one day that it was in there. <laughs> so these are the realities that are facing us as women. And until we can understand and share and openly talk about them and see how we support one another, we will not break this chain.